Vinnie Paul was the drummer for bands Pantera, Damage Plan, and Hell Yeah. He rose to fame during the early 1990s as part of metal act Pantera, alongside his brother Daryl, bassist Rex Brown, and vocalist Phil Anselmo. The group were one of the premier rock bands of the 90s metal scene. The band released tracks such as Walk, Cowboys from Hell, I'm Broken, Domination, and more. They are known as one of the most influential bands in not only metal, but also rock and roll, and is without a doubt future Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees. However, I'm not here to talk about the band Pantera. This video is about the man, Vince Paul Abbott. Vinny, along with his brother, Dimebag Daryl Abbott, are widely regarded as the biggest partiers in rock and roll. The duo's trademark drink, the Black Tooth Grin, which is two shots of Seagram 7, two shots of Crown Royal, and topped off with a splash of Coke, is something you'll hear about quite a bit from other bands. The Abbott's party stories are the stuff of legend, and being a huge hockey fan myself, this one is a personal favorite. Vinny and Daryl, who were friends with numerous players on the NHL's Dallas Stars roster, including players like Craig Ludwig, recorded an anthem for the playoffs titled Puck Off. When the Dallas Stars won the Stanley Cup in 1999, Vinny hosted an after party at his Texas home. During the wild party, Stars forward Guy Carbonat in an alcohol-fueled stunt infamously tossed the prize trophy off Vinny's balcony into the pool. Except the trophy did not land in the pool. The cup narrowly missed the pool, hitting the concrete below and rolling into the water, leading to players diving after it to prevent it from sinking. At the end of the night, the cup had a massive dent in the side. After Pantera broke up in 2003 due to differences within the band, Vinny, along with Daryl, recruited their friend Pat Lockman and Bob Kaka, whose last name I probably just butchered, to form their new band, Damage Plan. The group released one album, New Found Power, with songs like Pride and Breathing New Life being hits. However, this new group would split up in the most horrific way imaginable let us know about it so uh, once we finally came to the realization that the band was over me and Don decided to start writing music pick up the pieces kick some ass we hooked up with Mr. Lockman over here who brought a whole new life to the thing we had some breathing new life and uh, we started making music and then we brought in the Zilla God and we have a new band that kicks ass and we're really proud of it we're really happy anybody that's ever followed Pantera uh, I think you'll be happy with what we do and I hope you come and support us because we're there to kick some ass cool Absolutely. cool now I've read that Phil says he wishes on December 8th 2004 damage plan were headlining a gig in Columbus Ohio when the band took the stage and the sound of breathing new life echoed throughout the speakers a deranged Pantera fan, Nathan Gale, appeared from a large stack of amplifiers on the left side of the stage and walked past Pat Lockman and Bob Kaka, only slowing down when he got to Vinny's drum set. He then took a textbook firing position and pulled out his 9mm Beretta handgun, firing five shots at Daryl. Daryl's leg twisted under him, falling slumped over his signature lightning guitar as the sound of feedback screeched through the speakers. Gale was reportedly yelling at Dimebag, who by now was dead on the stage as Daryl's guitar tech quickly ushered a horrified Vinny off stage before the gunman turned his attention to him. Nathan Gale had a plan to kill both Daryl and Vinny that night. Police entered the scene and engaged in a short standoff with the gunman before police managed to take him down and stop the rampage. Daryl and three other people were killed. Vinny then called Daryl's girlfriend, Rita Haney, to break the news of Daryl's passing. Rita recalls Vinny saying on the phone, quote, Dude, I just saw my brother get shot in the back of the head five times, end quote, before the call ended. He then called back a short time later and simply said, quote, My brother's dead, end quote. 
what happened was a uh, man, a uh, 25-year-old man from Marysville, jumped up on stage. We are told up that he uh, jumped from the crowd onto the stage, walked over and shot the lead guitarist. Uh, then after that, uh, he took a hostage. Uh, he shot a bouncer who tried to pull him off, and then he fired into the crowd and killed two more people, injured two more. Uh, officer Mull saying there that uh, the officer who responded within two minutes after receiving the call, he was in the area, Officer James uh, Niggemeyer, he uh, says, I think uh, the community has a real hero here. This man in. Uh, walked in here. He did not have backup at that time. Backup was on the way, but walked in by himself and was able to uh, shoot this man. Um, the 25-year-old man, Nathan Gale from Marysville, uh, shot him. In on December 1st, 2004, a week before the tragedy, Phil and Selmo told the media that Daryl deserved to be beaten severely and made references to the Abbots being alcoholics. After Daryl's passing, Vinnie Paul blamed Anselmo for putting it out there that his brother deserved to be hurt, and then a week later he was killed. Anselmo was banned from attending Daryl's funeral, and Vinnie and Phil never spoke again. Daryl's funeral was held on December 14, 2004, in Arlington, Texas. Vinnie walked on stage and encouraged fans to chant Dimebag. Vinny spent most of the service consoling Dime's friends and doing his best to help out. After the service, Vinny had a small after party at his home. Bye. As thousands of people paid tribute to murdered guitarist Dimebag Daryl Abbott, the Arlington-born musician was shot during a show last week. Last night's public memorial paid the ultimate rock and roll tribute. NBC5's Aaron Allen joins us live from Arlington with more. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning, and I'm sure the turnout here would have made Abbott proud. Thousands of people here last night to show their support for the murdered musician. Fans crowded into the Arlington Convention Center's main ballroom as some of the most famous faces of rock took the stage sharing their personal times with their music and party buddy, the man they called Dime. Images of Abbott manning his guitar and slinging his famous long hair rolled across big screens, screens set up around the ballroom, setting the mood that was part memorial service, part rock concert. Performers played next to a life-size cutout of Dimebag Daryl with his guitar, and fellow guitarist Eddie Van Halen was among those speaking to the crowd, sharing a voicemail from Dimebag he had saved on his cell phone. I was the epitome, lived, breathed, and is rock and roll. I will forever. I don't know how to make a CD of this and forever hold it with me. Yeah. So to speak. And the concert may be over. Vinnie Paul seemed to take the whole ordeal a lot better than you would have expected, but he never truly showed how absolutely crushed he was on the inside. It's reasonable to say that Vinnie was an alcoholic, as he even admitted in an interview that he drinks quite a bit every single day. Some have gone as far as saying that after Daryl's passing, Vinnie, quote, drank himself to death. However, the most shocking of these claims is from Nickelback's Mike Kruger. Kruger claimed that Vinnie, quote, didn't really want to be alive anymore, following up with, quote, the story of Diamond Vinny, it's a pretty tragic story. The truth is that I think Vinny gave up a lot when he had to witness his brother being murdered. I think he lost a lot of his life, and I really felt like he was so sad that he didn't really want to be alive anymore. He really struggled until the end. It never got better for him. It really was a horrible experience, obviously, seeing your only brother get murdered on stage while performing. Nickelback was close with the Abbott brothers, so this isn't just pure speculation, and is a direct quote from Mike Kruger. Vinny eventually formed a new band titled Hell Yeah, which featured Damage Plan bassist Bob Kaka, who left the band in 2014. Also in 2014, on Chris Jericho's podcast, Vinny said he had come to terms with Daryl's passing and that he was doing better. On June 17, 2018, Vinny performed at the Hard Rock Casino in Las Vegas. On June 22, 2018, 
The official Pantera Facebook page announced that Vinnie Paul had died in his home at the age of 54. No cause of death was revealed until later on, when it was revealed he died of, quote, dilated cardiomyopathy and coronary artery disease. Sad news to report here out of the music world. The drummer and co-founder of metal band Pantera has died. This announcement made here on Facebook saying that Vinnie Paul has passed away. He was only 54 years old and overnight tributes from other musicians came pouring in. This is a tribute here from Brett Michaels saying that Vinnie was a great friend. His heart is aching. He posted a picture of the two of them together. Papa Roach, the band, posted this overnight saying that they are gutted to hear about the nicest guy in metal passing. Vinnie Paul showed us nothing but love. Mary. Vinnie's funeral was held on June 30th, 2018, and to the surprise of everyone, the lights went out and Phil Anselmo was shown on the big screen saying a few words about his fallen bandmate. Vinnie is buried alongside Daryl and his mother in Arlington, Texas. Only a few short months ago, it was revealed that Pantera would be reuniting with Phil Anselmo and Rex Brown, along with Zach Wilde and Charlie Bennett taking the place of the Abbots. Fans are split on this, as Vinnie once said, without Daryl, there would never be a Pantera reunion. However, this is still set to take place, and the reunion show will debut in just over a month on December 12th. The Abbots are known as some of the biggest names in metal and are heavily respected by the community and other bands. Even after his passing, people had only good things to say about Vinny. They will both go down as legends in the metal community.